Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well today. Welcome to a Chelsea news video. We're going to be talking about a couple of things today. Chelsea are apparently front runners and relatively close to securing the signature, the signing of Lamdi Collins, an absolute rocket of a centre half from Germany, from Dortmund. This kid is a lightning rod, a physically imposing character, and Chelsea could potentially sign this kid for next to nothing. If this signing could indeed be secured, it would be more smart business from Chelsea Football Club in securing the next generation of elite footballers with some superb youth scouting. So I'll tell you a little bit more about this kid in just a moment, but it's looking very positive in Deed. Also, I want to talk about Ethan Ampadu. He's recently spoken of his frustrations of being out in Germany on loan at RB Leipzig, not getting the minutes he'd liked. I kind of want to remind people of some numbers that he can post and really why Chelsea fans should not forget him and, re and how he could be another option at centre-half that really kind of is a semi-problem position for Chelsea Football Club. I'll give you some numbers on that too, which is positive. Right, I'm about to crack open the good gear, but I want to remind you guys to subscribe if you've not yet done so. The majority of my viewership are not subscribed. They come back and watch the videos. So hey man, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, the bell notifications icon, all that luck. All right, I've got the housekeeping out of the way. Let's get into the good gear. 16 year old German international Namdi Collins plays for Dortmund's only got one year left on his contract a few clubs are looking at him very closely indeed main two notable big clubs are Manchester City and Chelsea Football Club the two clubs in England that have the best academies and youth development but if we are to believe German news outlet build they are reporting that Chelsea Football Club are front runners for the signing of this youngster. Collins is a physical specimen at just the age of 16 and he plays for the under 16s and captains his side. Big, imposing, authoritative character. Kind of everything that you want in a centre half. Very highly rated of course, but the most interesting thing about Collins is he's an absolute rocket. Yes indeed, this kid runs very, 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 very fast. Over in Dortmund, this kid can run 30 meters in just 3.8 seconds that's right 3.8 seconds that sounds incredibly fast indeed doesn't it that's because it is that's pretty much the same record as Pierre Emerick Aubameyang and we all know Aubameyang as an elite rocket a lightning bolt indeed this kid is pretty much matching it and he is 16 years old of course your body is still yet to develop at 16 and you have not reached your peak physical powers so you can bet your bottom dollar mate and he's going to get faster than Aubameyang. Wow. Of course, he's a centre-back, so he's not going to be running in behind to chase some balls. But, you know, one of the most important things in English football, or just elite European football at the moment, is recovery pace. Of course, we've got Fakayo Tomori, who's got amazing recovery pace. Sure, he might need to tweak and develop certain other parts of his games. Also very young. They could be a centre-back partnership in, like, I don't know, five years or whatever. But imagine those two running back. You just Even if you split, like, defenders and you think, you're through these lightning kids come well tomorrow won't be a kid by then but you know what i'm saying they'll just be all over you the ball has been recovered possession's been turned over everybody stay calm everything's okay it's not like it used to be at Chelsea when the ball goes over the top or through and we're just done for. So really an incredibly exciting prospect. Chelsea are making moves in the transfer market in terms of signing youngsters. They want to make sure the next gens are an absolute beast of a force. And it makes sense. The market at the moment is so unpredictable, the transfer market. If it's not players prices getting inflated to just ridiculous sums it's just uncertainty in a world health crisis do you know what i mean so it makes a lot of sense to sign this sort of generation on the brink that really could be in the first team within even a couple of years develop them into something special and then you've got a whole ready-made generation ready to go Chelsea are smart. Whether this signing will be completed or not, I'm not so sure. I'm merely reporting on the news headlines rotating around Chelsea media these last couple of days, insinuating that Chelsea are indeed front runners. So we'll see what happens, but in terms of the player profile itself for the youngster, looks very good indeed. And if Chelsea can nab this kid, 
it can only mean good things, so fingers crossed. Next up, Ethan Ampadu. If you watch Football Therapy, you will know that this is one of my personal favourites for Chelsea players. Very, very headstrong player, aggressive in the tackle, very technical, good distribution, and just generally a very promising young player, whether he's playing centre-half or defensive midfield. Of course, he starts for Wales in defensive midfield, spraying long balls to the likes of Gareth Bale, and less so Dan James. <laughs> And for Chelsea, he's played all sorts of positions. He's played defensive midfield, he's played centre half, he's played right wing back or right back for Sari. I think I watched him once at the bridge. He's played all over the place. Now we all know the story, he went over to RB Leipzig, to Germany in the Bundesliga to what we all thought was an excellent and exciting loan to a club that plays good attacking football, to a club synonymous with playing youngsters, to a club who had recently appointed exciting new young attacking coach Julian Nagelsmann who plays youngsters. It's all gone a bit wrong, he hasn't really played and it's he's basically come out and said that. He's spoken of his frustrations, even though he's saying all the right things of, I have no regrets, because perhaps he doesn't. It's probably like a, what, a learning experience regardless, right? Going over to another country, seeing other players train, talking to other coaches. And he's had about seven appearances out there. Not a lot. But we know he absolutely dismantled Tottenham's attack in the Champions League. In the Champions League, away from home. He was brought in as an emergency centre-half because they were having a bit of a defensive crisis and he more than held his own with an excellent performance against Tottenham. In that game, his performance earned him a 7.2 rating on who scored. Now, I know a lot of you don't like the who scored rating and that's fine, but I'm just going to use it as a sort of reference point for this game. 7.2. On average, Chelsea centre-halves get about 6.7 and that's their more seasoned centre-halves. So they gave him a really good rating and it, to be honest, his metrics in that game back it up against the Champions League side in Tottenham on a Champions League night away from home. Ampadu made five tackles and interceptions in that game, which is a high number indeed, and made three clearances. Seven long balls, so he was still dictating play by playing long distributed passes slash crosses. And another amazing thing with all this, he saw a lot of the ball, made a lot of passes, but he still maintained a quite frankly very, very, very impressive 95% passing accuracy. So he had a very good game, his stats back it up, but I wanted to mention this game because it was a high profile game. It was the Champions League at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, a still relatively new grand stadium with the world watching, you know, coverage everywhere. No one knew what happened to Ampadu and suddenly he's starting in the Champions League in a massive game. And you know what? He stepped up to the plate, held his chest out and performed incredibly. And that's the kind of thing Chelsea are looking for for their first team. People speculate all they want, but to be honest, man, I really want to see Ethan Ampadu in and around Chelsea's first team next season. He'll certainly get more minutes than he did away in Leipzig. Frank Lampard's already commented on Ethan Ampadu, how he really, really likes him and wanted to work with him. I think Lamps will be equally frustrated with Ampadu's playtime over in Germany, so I think he will consider bringing him back to play him, hopefully, in the Chelsea first team, knowing that he can play him as a DM or a centre-half and pretty much rely on him. Certainly, if Frank Lampard wants to play another back three system against different opposition, he can basically be sure that Ethan Ampadu is pretty much the perfect candidate to sit in the middle of that back three in the David Luiz slash Christensen role. I think he could be an absolute baller there, a superb option, still young, can, his versatility is only a plus for him. I think he should be in the Chelsea first team next season. I think Chelsea probably will sell a centre-back, maybe, who knows, Chelsea can have a lot of centre-backs. I think Ampadu can offer something to Chelsea next season. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of Collins, the young centre-half. Do you think he could be a big part of Chelsea's future? And let me know your thoughts on Ethan Ampadu as well, man. That's important. I want to hear everyone's thoughts on that as well, because I really, really back him. Uh, also, quick shout out to Jan's Yard, my other YouTube channel, where I'm doing daily, that's right, daily lockdown live streams of FIFA 20 every day at 6 p.m. So you better come and hang out and show your support, man. It's loads of fun. We're building a Chelsea team together. I'll put a link in the top of the description, so do go check it out. Other than that, man, feel free to follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it for me, you lot. Enjoy the football that's not happening, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck.
In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby